Hey everybody, Tarek here, and today we're going to be looking at the Novation circuit. This is Novation's new groove box. Um, I managed to get one of these last week and I uh, had a few people ask me to do a review on it, so here it goes. Uh, as you can see, this is it, new Novation groove box. Um, it's a really, really solid little unit. Um, it's entirely plastic, there's no metal top plate or anything like that to it, but um, it feels like it would stand up really well to um, live use and touring, things like that. I'd have no problems tossing this into a backpack. Um, take with me wherever I go. Um, the base is this nice solid uh, rubbery blue material. Um, it's got really large feet on it which I think is great. Make it easy to set up in a DJ booth or in a live PA setup. It's not going to slide anywhere. Um, maybe see down here in the bottom there is a small little speaker built into it too um, which is really handy if you want to go make music somewhere just sketch some ideas out and don't want to wear headphones. Um, you're not going to be rocking any parties with it but it works in a pinch I find. It runs on batteries, includes a little battery display when it first powers up so you can see how much uh, juice is left in your batteries. It takes uh, six AA batteries and Novation says they should last about five hours. Um, one thing I will point out is I noticed that when you have batteries inside this, sometimes when you're tapping on the pads, um, there's like a little slight rattle. The, the batteries do kind of move around a little bit in the case. Um, I know that there's different tolerances for batteries. There's no quite one standard for how um, wide they should be. Um, but just thought I would point that out. If you're playing your Novation circuit and you hear like a slight rattle, there's nothing loose inside the case except the batteries. Just pop those out and be a lot quieter. Uh, as you can see, nice bright uh, LED pads there to play on. Um, I actually kind of wish there was a dim setting for these. They're a little bright sometimes in a really dark studio like I prefer, but um, for outdoor use they'll work great, I think. Uh, in terms of connections, on the front there's a 1 8 inch headphone jack. Um, on the side we have the battery compartment for the 6 AA batteries. Uh, on the back there's a power button, um, a space for the included uh, power supply, uh, and a USB port. Uh, currently the USB port is only used for transferring uh, MIDI, um, CC, and clock, as well as interfacing with the new editor that um, Isotonic Studios has come out with um, in collaboration with Novation for editing the uh, synths on this, um, which we'll look into in just a minute. Uh, there's also a MIDI in and out port on those little mini 1 8 inch jacks. Um, it does come with connectors, or I'm sorry, adapters, so you can use regular standard DIN cables if you need. Um, kind of a shame considering there's enough space on the back of the unit for regular MIDI ports, but it seems to be the way the industry is going, so um, that's what we're stuck with for now. Uh, and then there's also uh, stereo output, and that's on TS jacks, not TRS jacks, so I don't think it really matters in this case, but just pointing that out. Uh, the knobs themselves are actually really, really solid. Um, there's no wiggle to them. They feel they feel like quality knobs. Again, the whole unit itself feels like a much better quality than you'd expect for roughly around 300 euros, um, 300 dollars US. I'm not sure what that is in UK pounds currently. Um, but yeah, they're all endless rotary knobs, um, except for the uh, there's a master filter. Uh, if you turn it one way, it acts like a high pass filter. And if you turn it the other way, it acts like a low pass filter, which is pretty handy. A lot of DJ mixers are set up for these days. Um, and the buttons themselves, the pads that you actually play on, um, they are velocity sensitive. They don't transmit aftertouch. Um, I think that they're really, really actually pretty nice to play. They're a little stiffer than like say pushes um, or machines, but um, getting like a good velocity range hasn't been a problem for me at all with those. They feel pretty solid that way. Um, the rest of the buttons are slightly more squishier, um, but that's not a problem either. So let's dive in and look at this a little closer and we'll take a look at the editor as well that's in currently in beta right now and uh, we'll come back and I'll let you know what my overall thoughts are about this and compare it to the Cord Electri, which is probably its closest competitor in terms of features and cost. Let's look into it. Okay, so here we are zoomed in a little closer so you can see what's going on with the circuit. Uh, just a quick reminder for those of you who don't know much about this. Uh, basically, you can have four drum sounds at once, drums one, two, three, and four. Uh, these are samples and there are 64 samples uh, internally that you can choose from. Uh, and then there's two synthesizers as well, um, Synth 1, Synth 2. Uh, and these are actually a combination of either uh, virtual analog modeling or wavetable synthesis, um, which we'll see a little bit later as I dive into the editor. Uh, so the state of all your synths, uh, what drums you've selected, any tweaks you've made to the knobs, um, your pattern settings, your effect settings, all those kind of things are stored uh, in what Novation calls a session. It's basically like a self-contained song. Um, you have 32 of those you can store at once. Uh, and as you can hear, uh, the sessions, you can select them live on the fly and it will wait until the pattern currently ends before it starts the next one. Uh, or if you want to start immediately, which is kind of handy, um, you can hold shift. 
can jump around uh, your sessions in real time immediately, which is kind of handy for fills and things like that. Uh, another neat trick too is if you made a bunch of tweaks to one of your sessions, if you reload the session, um, it'll go right back to your save settings. And again, it's quantized to the end of the, the current pattern, um, which is a really useful trick for live performers. Um, those of you who've used electron boxes know this is like kit reload. Um, it's the Novation way of doing that, and it's super, super handy for live use. So anyway, that's session. Like I said, there's 32 sessions you can use right now. The lit up ones are ones where I have uh, data stored and the half lit ones are blank. Um, I'm not quite sure why these aren't just dim totally if they're blank, but that's how Novation has organized it. Uh, and then internally, like I said, this saves the state of your synths and your drums. So let's dive into the drums, or uh, let's dive into the synth first, actually. You have two synths, synth one and synth two. Um, when you select a synth, uh, you can play it on this keyboard. The top two rows are like a, a condensed keyboard. And the layout of the keyboard depends on your scale setting. Uh, let's take a look at that really quick. Uh, in here, you can select up to 16 different scales. Uh, you will have to refer back to the manual um, to know what these are called. I think the first one's like harmonic minor, major, melodic minor, melodic minor descending, things like that. Um, there's also pentatonic scales and some more uh, esoteric uh, ethnic scales, for lack of a better word. Uh, you can also change the root note. So this right here is, you can see how when you change the root note, the scale shifts as well. Um, but this is great because you can transpose things on the fly. So even after you've recorded notes into, into the circuit, um, you can go back after the fact and not only change the scale, but transpose the root note too. And that happens in real time, which is really useful. So I'll go back to the synths. Uh, again, the dark buttons are kind of your root note. And these are all the other notes within the scale. Uh, the second two rows of these uh, LED pads are is the sequencer. And you can hear which notes have been recorded. This is a uh, 16 steps, one bar. Um, by default and the patterns, uh, your patterns are one bar long, um, which is 16 steps again by default. However, you can change the length of a pattern um, using this mode, the, little, the length setting. Uh, this only applies to the synths, however. Um, you can't change the length of the drum drum patterns, unfortunately, they're always stuck at 16. But uh, so as you can see, I'm, I'm changing the length. Now it's only eight beats long and, and uh, the recorded notes are actually grayed out, showing you that you have stuff recorded there, but it won't play. Uh, as I mentioned, these are one bar long patterns, but you can chain up to eight of them. Uh, these, all these patterns are for synth one. These patterns are for synth two. Um, drums are kind of shared between patterns. You have eight patterns for drums one and two and eight patterns for drums three and four. Um, I'll get to those in a second. Um, but the neat thing here is you can actually chain patterns if you want by holding the first pattern and the last pattern. Um, so you can chain all eight if you want. And this is saved in the session. So um, if I was to save this right now when I called it back up, um, I would have eight bar loops um, for this synth and I'd have a one bar loop for this synth. Um, drums would have a two bar loop on, on there. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility there. You can do a lot of like kind of uh, polyrhythmic things for lack of a better phrase, um, if that's your thing. Um, especially when you combine it with the length of the patterns, the synth patterns being less than 16 if you want, you can get some pretty crazy results that will just evolve over time for a long, long time. Uh, very useful, especially the fact that we can save this in session view. Uh, so in addition to the synths, you also have uh, the drums. Like I said, these are shared. So the top two rows are for drum one. This is just the uh, sequencer, the pattern sequencer. Uh, and the bottom two rows are for drum two. So in this case, I have a, a bass drum and a snare. And this is a, I have a two patterns looped right now, and which is great because uh, the display actually changes as the, the uh, patterns loop, so you can edit them as, as you go. And if you were to stop it, it'll stop on whatever the current playing pattern is. So um, it's pretty easy to edit things on the fly that way. Uh, and the same holds true for drums three and four. The top two rows are for drum three, and the bottom two rows are for drum four. Um, if you wanted to play these in real time, you just hold shift and note. Um, and now you can record in real time by pressing these keys. Very, very useful. Uh, another thing I will point out quickly, oops, let me get out of this mode, is you can also nudge your patterns. So in this case, drum three is selected. The top two rows again show the sequencer for drum three, and I can use these keys to nudge notes forward or backward. So another useful performance technique, uh, you can use that for making fills on the fly, or if you've just recorded playing in real time and you realize that you, you misjudged where the, the one beat was, um, you can shift things after the fact to get everything to line up. So again, super, super useful. Uh, and then when it comes to notes, uh, you have certain editing options uh, once you've recorded notes too. Well, let's see if I can find one. In this case, we have, uh, normally it's showing note mode. Uh, I should show this really quick too, actually. If you hold shift and press note, uh, you get an ex expanded keyboard. 
Um, so you can use all four rows to play instead of just two rows of normal. Um, but you can also edit the velocity of notes. If you hold down a recorded note, you can see what the velocity was. Louder, quieter, which is useful. And also the gate time shows you how long the notes are. Uh, and each one of these lights, these LEDs, is a 16th note. So if you want a full note to hold for one bar, you just light, it, light them all up. So again, that's the uh, velocity and the gate settings, which is very, very useful. Uh, I usually have a note mode, however. Uh, one final trick you can do is, uh, let's solo this, and I'll come to that in a second. So this is my synth, and I, oops, I've made it quiet. <laughs> well, let's try a different sound. Uh, another thing you can do after the fact is you can actually shift record notes up or down an octave just by holding shift and pressing the octave buttons. Unfortunately, in this sound, it, uh, the way I have it set up, um, it's not really showing that too well. But if you've recorded some notes and it's an octave too high, or if you've recorded a melody line and you want to try it as a bass line, um, after the fact, you can just hold shift and press the octave buttons to actually transpose um, the entire recording for that, uh, that patch uh, in real time. Uh, when it comes to patches, like I said, there are 64 patches for the synth and 64 samples for the drum sounds. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the drum sounds first. I'm just going to loop. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to loop and I've got drum one solo done. This is 4-4 four, 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 four beats here. Um, to select a new drum sample, you just hold shift and press the actual name, so drum one. And here you can see there's 32 drum samples, and then if I want the other 32, um, I use the octave buttons to access those. And the, uh, the one that's lit up here right now is also, uh, that's the currently selected one. Um, so real quick, I'll just kind of go through all these drum samples, because I know I was curious what kind of samples the uh, circuit came with, and this way you can kind of hear what's in there. And again, these are just stock samples. These don't have any tweaking. Um, you can still radically shape these um, with the parameter knobs, which I'll talk about in a second. So. So there's 16 kicks, eight snares, uh, eight claps, there's only four open hi-hats and four closed hi-hat samples and they don't really correlate. Um, so the, the, the first closed hi-hat doesn't necessarily go with the first open eye hat as if they were a kit. Um, there's also no way to do choke groups either. Um, not really a big deal for me, but just thought I would point that out. So again, four closed eye hat and four open eye hat samples. Kind of wish there was a little more, but that's what we get. And then there's eight more just kind of random cymbal samples. And you can hear the last 16 are just kind of random percussion sounds. Those are kind of the only part I kind of find of a letdown. Some of those are okay, and I've managed to tweak them into something new, but um, given the kind of focus on electronic dance music that this seems to have, um, some of those samples seem kind of cheesy, to be honest. I'm not quite sure why Innovation chose those, but um, I guess it ex you know appeals to a broader range of musicians. So anyway, those are the 64 drum samples you have to choose from. And like I said, you can tweak those quite a bit. Um, we'll go back to this kick drum. The uh, knobs are laid out, the top four knobs are for drum one, the bottom four knobs are for drum two. Um, unlike the synths, um, these are always assigned to the same parameters. Uh, the first one is pitch. The second one is like an envelope, basically your decay and release. Uh, the third one is like a distortion overdrive. And the last one is a filter, and this kind of mimics the master filter. Turn it one way for a high pass turn it the other way for a low pass. Um, so it's pretty useful for the samples. There's quite a bit of tweaking potential there. Um, even though you only have 64 drum samples at one time, um, you can get a lot more mileage out of what's included um, than you would expect. Uh, when it comes to the synths, let's uh, let me unmute this. And we'll play a synth. Let's uh, select a session again, actually. To select a synth part, it's the same thing. You hold shift and press the synth. Uh, 
And again, you can press the active buttons to access 32 more. So some of these default patches are monophonic and some of them are polyphonic. Um, they're kind of organized together, like all the bass lines tend to be monophonic and they're all grouped together and all the synths tend to be polyphonic and are grouped together. Um, again, I would kind of encourage anybody from what you just heard or if you get to play with one in the store, don't judge this box just by those stock sounds as they are. Um, once you start tweaking these knobs, um, you can get some pretty crazy territory. Unlike the drum samples, all eight knobs are dedicated to each synth at one time. Uh, they aren't assigned in any kind of necessarily, you won't have the same parameters assigned uh, in each patch. Um, broadly speaking, these first two knobs control oscillators, the second two knobs control filters and modulation envelopes, um, same with the third, and the last two knobs tend to generally control effects, but that's only a rough guideline. Uh, you'll find that um, a lot of the times these knobs are assigned to totally different things depending on what you patch you called up. Um, so again, I wouldn't judge this synth on how it sounds by the, the, the default preset sounds. Once you start tweaking them, you can change things a lot, which is really, really useful. Um, so I showed you the pattern screen. Um, I've kind of briefly hinted at the mixer screen. Um, these are mutes. You can mute each part, the two synths, as well as the drums if you want. Um, these are also the volume controls, the knobs right above each part. Um, and again, there's color coding to make it easy to see which is which. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is all these function buttons on both sides and some of the ones on the top, um, they can be momentary or latching. So if I press the pattern button and let go, it, go it goes to the pattern screen. Um, on the mixer, if I press and hold, it shows you the mixer view, and then when I let go, it goes back to the pattern screen. I'm um, in the same with the effects and things like that. So again, really, really useful for live performance. Um, there's also, here's your global tempo, uh, or I'm sorry, tempo per session. Um, the tempo is saved per session. Again, you can just press and keep it held down to momentary glance at it, or you can just press it once to lock it in place. Um, and it uses these pads to show you what the tempo is. It's actually not too hard to see. Uh, it works the same way for the swing setting. And again, swing is per, um, per session. Um, I find a setting of 57 actually works really, really nice. Uh, in addition to those, you also have clear and duplicate buttons. Um, so on the pattern screen, if you want, you can hold clear and you can clear a pattern. Um, you can duplicate a pattern multiple times. So now I've just copied that to all eight slots. So it's really handy if you know, you got a one bar pattern and you wanna make eight bars instead, it takes two seconds to do. Uh, saving, uh, saving applies again to the sessions. That's how you save all your work. Um, you can press it twice to just save whatever current session you're in, or if you're in session view, um, you can press it once and then select a location for the new save spot. Really simple to use, really intuitive. Uh, and then finally we have the effects. Uh, these top two rows control delays. Basically there's a global delay and there's a global reverb. And those are the only effects you can access from the unit itself. Um, but there are more effects in here as we'll see when we get to the editor. Uh, so basically uh, the first button in each, in each case is off, uh, no delay, no, uh, no reverb. Hang on, let's call it a better sounding pattern here, session. So right now I've just got the synth one soloed so you can hear what the effects sound like. Again, the button, the knob right above the, the part is a send for that effect. So this is, right now I've got it selected green for reverb um, and I've got the reverb send up all the way. Of course, this is off. And as you move left to right, the reverb time gets longer and longer. And there's more than just reverb. It sounds like there's some weird modulation effects going on here, which is kind of cool. Um, and the same thing applies with the delay. Right now the delay's off. And as you go left to right, the delays get longer and longer. One thing I've seen people complain about on the circuit is there's no way to control panning. Um, necessarily again with the editor there kind of is but from the unit itself there's no pan control um but i have found that a lot of the patches inside the unit the ones even that are that come stock here um, are pretty wide they always have some panning going on within the patches and again with the effects too the the reverbs are pretty wide and the delays are like usually ping pong stereo delays so um, even though there's no panning control it's still easy to get um, a pretty wide sounding mix happening with just the circuit itself uh, again so like i said these are global these uh these reverb and effect settings and their sends 
um, for every single one of the parts, the two synths and the two drums, which is useful. Uh, the other thing that's really nice is the two synths have side chains. And these work kind of like the effects do, where the left setting is all the way off. And then as you go left to right, it adds more and more side chaining to that part. Let's try it with this one, probably a little bit more obvious. So it's pretty heavily side chained right there. Uh, and the side chaining always goes on whatever is happening with drum one, which typically, um, for the default kits anyways, your kick drum. Um, I should point out you don't have to. These aren't hard coded. There's you don't have to go. You don't have to go kick, snare, hi hat, hi hat, cymbal, whatever. You can put any drum sample you want on any one of these drum parts. Uh, and happily, if you do mute the drums, drum one, the side chaining still does affect um, synth one and synth two. So um, you can mute your drum. You can mute your kick drum and not worry about the side chaining stopping. Uh, again, you, very useful for live use. Uh, so yeah, that covers the basics, I think, of how this works. Um, as you can see, um, there's a lot of functionality here, and without a display, it's actually pretty easy to still find your way around. You know, you've got just some basic basic screens with patterns, mixer, and your effects. Over here, you've got your editing for your patterns with note, velocity, gate. Um, you can nudge your patterns forward or backward or change the length of the synth patterns, at least. And then some more global controls up top, uh, your octaves for whatever you're playing, tempo, swing, clear, duplicate, save, and your sessions, so you can choose new sessions. <laughs> Uh, one thing I should point out too with the sessions I forgot before is your tempo and your swing settings are stored with sessions. And if the sequencer is stopped and you select a new session, it will use whatever that tempo setting was that was saved with the session. However, if the sequencer is playing and you select a new session, it will keep the current tempo. Um, so you can select new sessions when you're playing live and not worry about your tempo suddenly slowing down or speeding up. Again, super, super useful for live performers. So just thought I would point that out. Uh, hopefully that covers all the basics. I realize it's quite deep here. Um, there's a lot of functionality packed into this little box, but I think I've covered as much as I can. Um, so let's kind of step back and take a quick overview of the review and compare this with the Cork Electribe. Okay, there's one final thing I wanted to cover that I forgot about, and that was the Isotonic Studios editor for the circuit. Uh, and this lets you edit both of the synths uh, internal to the circuit unit. Um, you know, when you first look at the unit, it looks like a pretty simple synthesizer, but actually this is a very, very complex synthesizer. Um, it even says in the manual for Isotonics that this is your first time, you know, editing synthesis. You might want to use the uh, the V-Station, which is much simpler to get to grips with compared to this. Um, but for those of you who like to tweak, you know, your synths and get really specific with your sounds, this is great. Um, so you get to select between both Synth 1 and Synth 2, uh, internal to the, the circuit. Um, you can see when you turn the macro knobs on the hardware unit, it's reflected on the display too. Um, this top section up here, this covers all of the library, so you can save patches to and from circuit or your hard drive, things like that. Um, this middle section controls your macro assignments. You've got all eight macros. Um, as you can see, each macro um, has up to four destinations with start and position and depth, so it's pretty complicated, uh, or maybe not complicated, but pretty complex if you want. Um, you can do some pretty interesting routings that way with your macro knobs. Uh, and then this bottom section, the editor here, um, is the actual synth itself. Um, the, the, the oscillators, there's two oscillators, and they actually have quite a few uh, different waveforms. There's, um, initially, there's some analog modeled uh, oscillators, and then later on in, in the oscillator list, there's quite a few uh, wavetables and pulse width modulation oscillators. So um, there's a lot of variety here. There's, what, almost 30 different oscillator types um, that you can choose from. Um, you know, you get interpolation, you can do the pulse width index for the wavetable, so you can sleep the wavetable. Um, there's a density parameter, detune. Um, how it responds to pitch bend, and this is all per oscillator, so it's so pretty complex. Uh, there's also two LFOs, and uh, one thing I should point out with the LFOs that I didn't quite expect was that in addition to the basic waveforms like square, saw, random, things like that, there's also some LFOs that are sequences. Um, so you can set the LFO to be like a one-shot, and in effect you get um, almost like a little mini arpeggiator built in. Um, some of these are actually even set to scales to major, minor um, scales and things like that. So the LFOs have a lot more depth than you would expect. And of course, they can all be tempo synced. Uh, over here, we have the mixer for both oscillators. You can rig modulate them. You can, it has a noise level you can uh, modulate. Um, you can also send oscillators pre and post effects, which is pretty useful. Uh, as far as envelopes go, there's three uh, amplifier envelope, a filter envelope, and then a, a third envelope you can freely assign. Um, the filter, there's a couple different kind of filter routings you can do here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, filter types. Uh, as you can see, we have what six different filter types: low pass, band pass, high pass, 
Uh, in addition, you can overdrive the filter and there are, it looks like seven different overdrives you can choose, pretty handy. Uh, and you can also make the filter track the keyboard too if you want it. Um, so quite a bit more complexity there than you would expect. Um, modulation matrix, uh, this is actually really, really useful. Um, there's up to 20 modulation slots. They have two sources each um, for each destination um, with a depth value for each one too. So um, quite a bit of routing you can do internally on the synth. Uh, and then finally, there is uh, distortion built in. Again, I think we have the same distortions that there are on the uh, filter overdrive. Um, there's a built-in chorus uh, or phaser if you prefer phaser, which is useful. Uh, again, it can be tempo synced. Uh, and then one of my favorite thing things here is that every patch um, on the circuit synth has its own built-in EQ. So low pass, I'm sorry, a low band, a mid band, and a high band. Uh, and just ignore this placebo; it's a placeholder right now. Uh, and again, voice controls. Um, you can set up patches to be monophonic or poly mode um, with Glide if you want. Uh, and finally, the editor can be resized. So if you have a really large screen, you can make it pretty big. Or if you have a small screen, you can make it pretty small. All in all, there's a lot more depth to the synth than uh, you might first think um, when you first get the circuit and start playing around just with the hardware. Um, I don't think this is necessary. You don't have to use the editor if you don't want to. But um, if you really want to dive in and design your own synths, then you pretty much have access to full-on um, Novation synth, Novation synth, right inside circuit. Um, you can tweak any way you want, and then save your patches right back to the hardware to take with you when you gig. So, very, very, very flexible. Uh, much more flexible than the Korg Electri when it comes to synthesis, um, provided you want to use the editor. So that's a quick uh, overview of the uh, new Isotonic Studios editor. Uh, currently, you need a beta firmware from Novation to make this work, but it's freely available from the Novation website. Uh, and like I said, if you have the Novation circuit, I think this is a must get. It uh, requires Max to run um, or Max for Live. There's a Max for Live version. Uh, the Max, you don't actually have to own Max to make it work. You have to just install it, run the demo. Um, and even once the demo expires, the uh, circuit editor will continue to work, which is really, really useful for those people who don't have Max right now. Uh, okay, so now we can take a, a step back here and do a quick wrap up and compare uh, the Novation circuit to the Korg Electribe. So that was a quick little overview of how the circuit's laid out and how it works. Um, hopefully that was helpful to kind of give you a little bit more of an understanding of um, what exactly you can do with this little box. Um, as far as my overall thoughts on it, I, I actually like it a lot more than I expected. Um, I would go so far as to say, at least for my uses, it's probably one of the best group boxes I've ever used. Um, it's intuitive, it's hands-on, um, there's no display, it's easy to find your way around still without that. Um, there's a ton of performance features built in, things like transpose and the way the patterns work as far as having different length patterns or multiple um, pattern lengths uh, across parts in one session is really, really great. Um, it's just a good tool for live use, um, I find. Um, the other thing I like about it is that it kind of encourages you to explore. I mean, you might not always, you can't really always go into it, you know, thinking to yourself, well, I want to tweak this oscillator and adjust that filter and things like that. You have to just start tweaking the macros and uh, listening to how it sounds, and you can get some really, really cool sounds that way. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Teenage Engineering OP1 in that respect, that there's some non-standard parameters there and things aren't labeled quite like you would normally expect for a synthesizer, but um, it encourages exploration and you find some really unique sounds that you might not have found otherwise if you were going into it more with a, a solid plan of what you're trying to achieve. Um, so I like that for a, a device like this. It's just a lot more fun to play as a result. And some of the limitations as far as only having two synths and things like that at a time kind of disappear in, in light of that. Um, comparing it to the Korg Electri, which is its closest competitor, I think, in terms of functionality and price, um, I think in some respects, the Electribe has the upper hand when it comes to preparing things for studio use later. Like if you want to sketch ideas out, uh, song ideas out, um, and then expand on them later in the studio. Um, there's more effect types, there's more filter types, um, some more raw oscillator sounds that you won't find quite in the, in the circuit, some, you know, real instruments and things like that. Um, plus, you know, it's more flexible as far as you can run more synths at once if you want. You can organize, lay out, you know, lay out your drums differently. You know, you're, you're free to assign any kind of sound in any one of the parts, the 16 parts internally. Um, one of the downsides I find in Electride, though, is that when you start using these other filters and effects is you start running into polyphony issues. It's only got 24 note polyphony in, in total. Um, so, you know, even though I can use up to 16 parts on Electribe, I usually only get about six or seven before I start getting voices dropping out when I'm playing with it. So in that respect, it's actually pretty comparable to the circuit. Um, and when you look at it that way, I think the circuit's actually better because um, not only is it polyphonic, six voice polyphonic per synth instead of paraphonic, so you can actually play these like pads and, and, and long drones and things without running out of voices, but um, when you factor in what you can do with the editor and how deep you can actually edit the synthesizers in here, I mean, these are 
fully fledged synthesizers, not cut down ones like on the Electribe. Um, the fact that you can, you know, use the editor to shape those if you want to, and then throw it back into the circuit to take with you wherever you go is incredible. Um, the Korgs have the upper hand again uh, when it comes to exporting. Obviously, you can take all of your patterns um, or your pattern sets, and you can export those as audio stems or in Ableton Live format, which is, you know, super super handy if you're just sketching out ideas to expand upon later. Um, obviously, the uh, the circuit doesn't have any kind of exporting at the moment. Um, in fact, you can't even back up your sessions at the moment. Um, everything is stored internally and that's it. Um, hopefully, Novation is going to address that soon. Uh, I know that's a big, a big request they've been getting. Um, however, I do think that the circuit is much, much, much better for live performance. It's way more immediate. It's way more hands-on. Um, I find the overall sound quality to be slightly above the, the Electribe. I mean, you can make the Electribe sound great and amazing, but it takes a lot more work, I find. Um, you have to sit there and get really detailed with your settings to kind of down the right filter sweeps and things like that, so it doesn't get too boomy. Um, the fact that we have built-in EQ on all of the synths, you know, you can tweak afterwards if you want, is super flexible. Um, and there's just all the performance features that it has built in. The fact you can reload sessions easily, uh, you can transpose after the fact, you can change scale and key after the fact. Um, all these things are super, super useful for live performers. Um, but most of all, I find that it just, it's more fun coming up with sounds on the circuit for me. Um, like I said, it encourages that exploration. You have to really kind of dive in and maybe not know exactly what you're doing, but you find a ton of happy accidents along the way. And I've gotten some sounds that I never would have come up with on my own otherwise. So um, again, it really reminds me a lot of the Teenage Engineering OP1 in that regard, even though they're drastically different as far as workflow goes. Um, so for me, I think that the circuit actually probably has a slight edge over the Cork Electribe. Um, as much as I like the Electribe, um, I just, I'm more about performing with my groove boxes instead of just creating static patterns that I'll expand upon later in the studio necessarily. Um, and I find that the circuit definitely is much more hands-on as far as that goes. It's just more fun to use in that regard. Um, again, I can do it on the Electribe, but uh, it just takes a lot more work than it does on the circuit. So. I think it's a hit. I think Novation did an excellent job. It's definitely one of the best screw boxes I've ever used. Um, I have big hopes for this given how popular it's, it is already and how popular I think it's going to be. Um, hopefully we continue to see Novation support this in the future with more features. I know that you know sample loading is one that's been requested quite a bit. That would be pretty cool. Um, or even like another circuit, you know, another circuit unit itself just dedicated to sampling um, I think would be pretty neat. Um, and if we're having wish lists, I'd love to see a bigger one. Have Give me eight drum parts and four synths. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll probably just pick up a second one for my live sets because I find it just that hands-on and that intuitive to use that uh, I can't wait to perform with these. So yeah, two thumbs up for me. I think it's a great little unit. Novation did an excellent job. I'd have no hesitations to recommend it to anybody, even given some of the limitations so far. Um, I think we're going to see some changes there from Novation. And uh, yeah, it's a really unique groove box that I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy. Um, and it's just super, super fun to use. Hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, you can put them in the YouTube comments and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Um, or you can drop me an email as usual. Thanks everybody. And I'll talk to you later.